There is a million ways to spend a million bucks, and there is no shortage of stuff to buy and hoard and put into storage. We are constantly being bombarded with smart marketing. And one of the things that keeps happening is you'll go to Amazon, right? Or you'll go somewhere else, look online, all of a sudden that particular item is starting to chase you all over the place and you're getting retargeting. So there's a lot of methods that companies are applying and utilizing to even take more money away from your hard earned dollar. We're becoming more and more consumer based in our thinking. And think about it, even our religious holidays have become commercialized to the point where it's another excuse for you to shop till you drop. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the five money traps out there that are taking and actually stealing your money away from you. I have nothing to sell, no courses, none of that stuff. I'm just here to teach as many people as I possibly can. So people often fall into this proverbial financial quicksand or money traps as they start to earn more and more money. And it's all about programming. And before you know it, it's too late. You're either behind on your bills or in some type of a bad debt situation, and you're just not making enough. It seems as though people are really working a lot more hours, but they have nothing to show for it. You're in this proverbial roller coaster of working hard and long hours, and then you're continuing to increase your spending as your pay raises, and all of these things leave you with very little savings and without a future plan for investments. So with all the work you do, you should be having some type of a return. And life isn't just working all the time and not being able to be responsible with your spending. So instead of feeling like there's no way to win, there's no way that you can get ahead, let's talk about some of the things and some of the habits that we have and so we can start to break them. My name is Munif Ali and I literally started with nothing. Grew up in the projects, had a single illiterate mother who taught me a lot about the mindset of money. And in my early 20s, I was able to become a multimillionaire. So on this channel, I show you a lot of different ways, techniques, mindset, into getting you to understand money and being able to utilize it as an investment. And today, my companies sell billions in dollars in sales. One of the biggest money traps and myths out there is that this feeling of getting rich quick. There's no such thing. Yes, are there people who make a massive exit at some technology company they started 12 or 13 months ago, like Instagram being bought out by Facebook in just one year of operation with 12 or 13 people for a billion dollars? Does it happen? Yep. But there are also people who win the lottery by driving into some liquor store or convenience store on their way to work or on their way home after a big long cross country you know trucking venture and all of a sudden they're worth 90 million dollars does those things happen absolutely but in theory rich quick is something that these fake gurus sell you buy my course buy my tapes come to my big you know i don't know uh 100x conference or you know look at me i have a lambo or look at me i have a jet or any one of those things and get rich quick is not the way to think about money you can get rich but it's going to take you time you can be successful, but it's gonna take hard work. So full disclosure, get your mindset out of the get rich quick theories out there. Can you work smarter? Absolutely. Can you only get there by working hard? No, there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. So in getting rich quick, you might go out there and buy huge expensive programs because you think, or a course, because you think that this magical course made by the gods of finances is going to suddenly take you to financial bliss in heaven, but probably not gonna happen. And yeah, they show you testimonials on how it worked for this paid person and how this person's life was transformed from sleeping on someone's couch to all of a sudden becoming a billionaire. So be wise about all of that and try not to spend your hard earned money into buying a system. Now, I'm all for education, but I really gotta hit this one in the head because there's a lot of people that actually make millions and billions of dollars from trying to teach people how to make millions and billions of dollars and not necessarily from their own industry. So be mindful of get rich quick theories and systems because they've been around forever. They used to call it snake oil salesmen. The other trap is I'm going to get to a certain level before I invest. And you have a lot of that. Okay, when I get to my 30s, I'm gonna invest. Right now, my 20s is all about having fun. The sooner you can start investing money, the better it is for you. Because if you look at Warren Buffett, in my opinion, probably the wealthiest. I know he's not as wealthy as some of the number one and number two, but guess what? He's pretty diversified. He invests in a lot of things. He doesn't just have one company. He has multiple companies. So I'm listening to the Oracle of Omaha, and I realized that Warren 
Warren Buffett's wealth, his actual wealth comes from starting early. He invested starting at zero or a little bit of help, and then he was able to quickly amass that. Quickly, I say quickly because he amassed his entire wealth and fortune that we know him as way past his 40s. I don't know what the exact age is, but it was time in investment. So the earlier you can start out, the better it is for you. Don't wait to start investing in your 30s or 40s. Do it as soon as possible. If you could start an IRA, because you know one day you're gonna have retirement, start it as early as possible. I happened to go on a trip with my mom when I was around 14, and AL Williams, which was some type of multi-level insurance company, was having their annual retreat, and all of these people were there that represented the company, and a gentleman gave me an investment book and I still have it to this day. Uh, and it talked about IRAs and it talked about savings and that really changed my life and thought process. I started and I opened an IRA at age 15, I believe. And that IRA is still open. So start to invest as soon as possible. Don't wait for a magical day or date. That's the best time. And then in theory, if you waited a little bit too long, don't woe's me and look in the rear view. Just start as soon as possible. But when I talk about debt, understand that I'm talking about bad debt, your horrible credit cards and your consumer debt and I'm talking about your nasty credit cards, your consumer debt, you know, some of your car loans, stuff like that. Getting out of debt that doesn't really build or you can't leverage from. I'm all about real estate debt done the right way because that's where my experience comes from investing in my early 20s and being able to leverage the fact that I had little or no money and being able to build a real estate empire from the fact that I just kept continuing to constantly invest in more and more. Now, I got over leveraged, but that story I will save for another time. What I want to discuss with you is get out of bad debt as soon as possible, pay down interest rates that are crazy, uh, and you keep buying more and more things. So definitely get out of bad debt quickly and take your interest rates down as much as possible. And I talk about it in a couple of different videos, but it's really important that you do that. Let's talk about college. Now, I know that it's a forbidden thing, and I, as a father with five children, I have a couple of kids that have gone through college or in college already. And I'll tell you, pick careers that are science, technology, you know, engineering, mathematics, all of those kind of things that give you either a license to practice something or give you the knowledge or skills that put you far above everybody else. If you just get a degree in uh, you know, basket weaving, it's probably not gonna yield you a great life and you've gone through, on average, most people average college per year is somewhere around thirty to $40,000. So let's just say $40,000 times $460,000. Think of college as, okay, I'm not gonna talk you out of college at all. Are there millionaires and billionaires that went through college? Yes, so I'm not gonna say that it's not worthy. You have great experiences, you make good connections, but you gotta utilize this the right way. Pick smartly on what your major is going to be because you have to understand and that there's a bill to pay at the end and you know apply for financial aid and do all of those things. There's millions of dollars that go unclaimed in financial aid and scholarship. So find out whatever brackets you qualify for and go for that as well. You can do a two year community college in the beginning and then transfer in. The whole point is pick careers that are going to not leave you in a negative. Most people, and it's a big business, come out of college with $150,000, $200,000 in debt and now you're working, you know, you're already in a negative position. So be really mindful on your college experience expenses. Do you need to go to the top tier college or can you go to a college that still educates you that's much cheaper? Now think about all of those things. Maybe you can work through college as well. So this is one of the biggest traps out there. So be mindful of education and over education. Car loans, and I've talked about this in the past, you don't have to have a car even if you live in a major metropolitan area. Your New York's, your San Francisco's, your Los Angeles, your Chicago, you know, try to utilize some form of public transportation or Uber or getting around if you can, live close to your work if you can. This will cut down on a lot of commute costs, but a car is one of the biggest traps that you can fall victim to. Think about it. You're paying five, six, seven, even eight hundred and beyond dollars a month for just the payment because you get caught in a trap of I have to buy the best and nicest car. And if you think about it, a lot of people will say I can't afford to spend five hundred dollars investing every month, but you can afford a car payment. You don't have to have the biggest and the baddest car out there with all the bells and whistles. Go for something that has great longevity or don't buy a car at all because once you add up 
insurance, gas, and everything else, it gets super expensive. But if you have to have a car and you live outside of a major city and you have to travel back and forth, pick something modest. You know, all you have to do is Google the most dependable cars out there because what you pick, if it's not dependable, if it's just fancy and nice, you're gonna be spending a lot of money on upkeep through the years and you want your car to last. I had a car, it was a 1990 Toyota Tercel, and I got that car right at graduation and I kept that car for way more than a decade, I think 12 years. It had 150,000 plus miles on there. Uh, I just kept fixing it over and over again and that saved me a huge amount of money. And because of those little sacrifices I made along the way, I was able to drive whatever I wanted to later. But in that 20s, I had multiple homes, but I still drove the red rocket around. Last one I wanna discuss, I'm in real estate. So you might think I'm jaded by this, but buying way too much house, more house than you need. It's only one or two people and you go out there and get a four bedroom house thinking about filling it in. The average house in the 70s was about 1,600 square foot. Now, it's about 2,300 square foot and growing. So we buy these houses and then we fill them up with a bunch of stuff we don't need. You gotta think, if for example, you're just buying a house so you can fill it up with stuff, not only are you competing with a higher amount on your loan, because you're buying more house, but you're also dealing with the fact that a lot, a significant portion of your money is going to that house. So definitely think about how much house you need and do you really want a bigger house? Or do you need a bigger house? Do you need that house with a pool and you're paying a premium? I know interest rates are relatively low and I get it. And there's a lot of people, okay, spread through 30 years, you can buy more house, I get that. But make this a personal choice. Even though I'm in real estate, I own brokerages and related real estate companies, I'll tell you, all too often, people really stretch to buy as much house as possible. Look at your needs, look at your wants, look at your lifestyle. If you're barely at home because your job makes you travel all over the place, do you really need a massive house to show wealth? Or can you build wealth quietly?